Yeah, I think the great part about you being here is I get to do another new <laughs> injection for the first time with your guidance. And uh, mm -hmm. you didn't even grab my hand during the Gal Gate, so that was pretty awesome. <laughs> Um, so this is the AMSA. I honestly hadn't heard of this injection back in dental school. I didn't hear mm -hmm. of it until um, actually I, I started using the wand STA mm -hmm. and I heard people talking about it because for aesthetic dentistry, um, you could actually get from say second by to second by and the facial and palatal tissue all anesthetized and instead of doing 10 infiltrations, you can go on both sides and do an AMSA and get the mm -hmm. same type of anesthesia. And so two injections instead of 10, that sounds like a great idea to me. It just seemed counterintuitive to do it here on the palate for facial exactly. anesthesia. So I'm glad you're here to do this for the first time with me. So per your instructions, we're looking for where the curvature meets the flatter aspect of the palate right across, uh, right in between, say the two bicuspids, so right in here. And you mentioned pushing around. Yeah, just gently walk until you find the little thickest pad of tissue in that area. Mm -hmm. And that'll allow us to completely you know, cover the bevel adequately and, and actually have enough tissue to take up the anesthetic. Yeah, it's right in there. Where and I we're kind of using a little more traditional approach and we're going to go ahead and do the topical and then we're going to follow it with some pressure on the site, which is a, you know, real common approach for the palate. So is that then when you say the more we're doing this instead of the more the more typical one, what is the more typical one? Just well, I'd say th this, this is the more typical oh, combination okay. here versus um, you know, the no topical right. approach that you can do with the wand. With and just pressure instead? Actually, there, the pre-puncture technique would have you hover the bubble right at the tissue. Mm -hmm. And you actually use the cotton, um, sterile cotton swab to compress the lumen right at, or the bevel right at the tissue, and get that first drop to enter right on the tissue. So rather than having a topical proceed, you actually are depositing the drug itself from the very initial penetration through the tissue. Oh, got it, okay. Kind of takes using two hands together. Some people are comfortable with that, others aren't. Yeah, and I guess it saves a little time. It cuts it off this 60 mm -hmm. seconds that we have here, but. Mm -hmm. All right, that's our minute. Okay, now, for that's our first minute. Now I'm gonna go have you go right back to the same place, okay. and I want you to put pressure in this exact same place. Okay. And enough that we'd actually, you know, see a small dimpling. And just hold that. This for 60 seconds as well? Correct. You know, and then similar to what you might do for a greater palatine or other, you know, pressure anesthesia, just when you're ready, lift off the cotton and just go right for the middle of your dimple. Okay, so we're not, like I remember being taught in school, well, for a palate injection, not this in particular, was the mirror handle and then inject next to the mirror handle, handle. It's still in place. And this one, you know, and if we're trading off just one right on top of the other, um, you know, not all clinicians are comfortable doing that. And then also to avoid actually, you know, taking our sterile needle tip right through, right. And making contact with other objects. Okay. So I said just go right to the middle there. And so again, we're coming, we just want, we kind of, as you said, park the bevel against the bone so it's not coming across like this where we would hit the tip first and Correct. the bevel wouldn't be against the bone. We want to kind of make sure that that angle of the bevel is going to be right against the bone as you met, as you mentioned. And then from there just you know same thing just make your penetration and it's it will be fairly shallow. And we're just going to advance till we have contact. And then for this one, we have our base unit set on the STA setting. Okay. And we may or may not hear the same um, you know, signals we get from the dynamic pressure sensing indicators. And mm -hmm. you know, we've got dense tissue. That same pressure can build up, but it's not necessarily a component of this yeah, injection. Another cotton tip applicator I can borrow real mm -hmm. quick. Just And that's why, like in our kit, we keep the sterile cotton swabs, a couple in a pack, all ready to go. Yeah, that's so really smart. If we have any backflow, we can be collecting that. And they don't have to deal with the taste of it. I can see that blanching that you said it was going to occur. It's going all the way up to the bicuspids. Now, through the course of this injection, we are going to see that pattern, you know, extend, um, oftentimes right to the midline and back, um, approximating the mesial lingual of the first molar. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to be a little different. 
if your blanching pattern didn't go in both anterior and posterior direction, then you could choose another site and just you know, step a little more distal if mm -hmm. it was now this not seems flowing like, distally. This seems like an injection, this whole part delivering this, that would be really difficult with a manual syringe compared to just letting the computer do it nice and slow and steady. This seems mm -hmm. hard to do with a, a manual one. Well, and if we remember back to you know that feeling of what it feels like to give a nasopalatine, we're in that same dense tissue, so you have to maintain that pressure to keep the flow going throughout the injection, and that's mm -hmm. really tiring. And one of the other things, I've always find it interesting, the same thing with the greater palatine. You can see the pinking right around your, your penetration site. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, it's like the tissue always kind of fills in there last. Again, we've got a good blanching extending in both directions. And as we continue with that, we're going to have that fill in around at our penetration site as well. Now, depending on what drug we're using, we're going to be using anywhere from a half a cartridge to a full cartridge. Mm -hmm. And you base it less on how many it has gone from the cartridge versus the blanching pattern. Correct. The blanching pattern basically tells you when you're done here. Yeah, and any time you start seeing it actually dripping back out your penetration site, you know, the tissue is just not accommodating right. anymore. Solution. The other thing that we tend to notice with this one is as you retract the tissue back, we'll see this blanching. It is diffusing through into the buccal structures. And for some individuals, we'll see the same blanching on the buccal tissues at the end of this really? injection. Mm. And then, you know, that's a phenomenon where we're getting lingual gingiva, we're getting pulpal structures, and we're getting facial gingiva without getting any labial anesthesia which if I've got my terminology right, allows you to see your zenith line. Wow, nice pull. Ooh. That's a state board's question. <laughs> uh, you're right, I see it up to the second molar now. At this point, sometimes the patients will just have, you know, an experience of sort of, you know, just a pressure sensation. Mm -hmm. And when we're done, it's kind of like when you get peanut butter stuck to your palate, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that the thick yeah, yeah, feeling like up yeah. there. So do they start doing that? They'll kind of, like yeah, they'll kind of start rubbing, rubbing their tongue up no there. No offense, of course. Say, it just feels mm. fat. And she looks pretty good. And we could probably, at this point, if I felt I had the whole extent, I would go ahead and stop my deposition at that point. We've got good blanching. Mm -hmm. And then actually go ahead and lift her, lift to the side after you withdraw, and let's see if we've got. Okay, you want to lift it? Which is on your, you, you mean over here on this okay. side? I'm just going to make sure I don't. And she's sure. starting to get, yep, she's starting to get, okay. And if you can turn to the turn side, this see way. if we can get it. And you can see the blanching from the. Mesial of her second oh, molar yeah. through to her first bicuspid. Look at that. And that's as textbook as it gets, folks. That's uh In fact, from this view, see how look right in the palette at the median suture? Right. You can literally see the yeah, pink stops right from the there. blanch you half. Yeah, it stops right there. You can see exactly where right that stops, and it suture. goes back to the second molar. And then here we've got a diffusing You should have bet me there. $20 that, and said, do you think it will blanch on the, facial, <laughs> you know, on the buckle if we do this? And I would have said, absolutely not. Absolutely You're crazy. Not. So it kind of travels, you know, through yeah. that palatal tissue, then through the interproximal tissue, and then on, and well, and actually the through the bone. Through you know, the bone, you know, we've got you know, it's moving, yeah, it's moving wow. right through, through the bone, and you know, and it's a short distance um, into that maxillary dental plexus. So we're getting, you know, all of the. So based the on the signs, there. based on that palatal blanching and then blanching out to the facial, you're pretty confident that we've got good. I'm pretty confident we second bite to second bite. Pulpal anesthesia as as well as well. The in facial. this one, we're only getting to the midline. Right, so right, if I'm right, doing right, yeah, yeah to the midline, yeah, we have to do the same thing on the other side. But I would feel yeah, I would feel confident in doing anything in particular from um, probably through her first molar bicuspids. And for from mm -hmm. a hygiene standpoint, um, we're going to pretty much get everything we need for. You get for a doing first molar, molar as, as well without the PSA? In, in your particular case, we see blanching clear back to there, so I think it's likely that you would also have um, some anesthesia in the first molar. And if we had extensive procedures, we would go ahead and supplement that mm -hmm. um, with the PSA. On so, that what, side. They, so what I used to do is the PSA, MSA was like here, mm -hmm. and then ASA here. And if you had concern about crossover, sometimes then, then you're doing an additional infiltration right. for any but then collateral. On, only uh, greater palatine, they taught us. Mm -hmm. And that 
palpating to see where the dimple was mm -hmm. and just aim for that. And like and with the greater palatine, it's not going to get any of the yeah. lingual tissues in the anterior. And I'm sure if you rub your tongue up there, you can probably feel oh. it. Well, considering that's the first time I've uh, done that injection, Kathy, that uh, unlike the gal gates, there's not that feeling of I'm not sure where I am. You mm -hmm. you always know where you are, you know, during this, and you mm -hmm. just kind of watch the progression of the blanching. And even though you know, I think a lot of, of dentists are um, hesitate, including myself, to do a palatal injection if mm -hmm. it's not necessary. When I compare that to going around and doing infiltrations on all the teeth, oh my gosh, I mean that was, even though it's a palatal injection, so much more pleasant for the patient just to have two injections rather than have 10 and that whole bulk of, uh, of anesthetic with it as well versus barely under two carpules. Well, and the, and the time that's taken here is just for it to accommodate the solution where in the other t technique, you're, at, you're, you're correct, you're making an additional micro trauma, if you right. will, with each one of those penetrations. Overall, probably take you the same amount of time. Oh, I don't know. I think it would take longer for the other one. I think this is faster and probably better. I'm I'm sold on this too. You're okay. changing. You're changing <laughs> the way I do local anesthesia. That's good. I was looking forward to that. Yay.